Uh, today's lab, we're going to do the synthesis of acid analyte. Do not need much glassware. Uh, to carry out the reaction, you'll need a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask equipped with stir bar, and you'll need a stir bar retriever. Probably need a couple of stern rods, and you'll need a thermometer, um, beaker to make up the sodium acetate trihydrate solution, and then various graduated cylinders. Uh, we'll measure out 100 mils of the 0.4 molar HCl. Uh, to make the sodium acetate trihydrate solution, I would just use a beaker, maybe a 100 milliliter beaker, and then you're going to measure out 6 grams of the sodium acetate trihydrate, and to that add 20 milliliters of water, distilled water, and then stir that. I would go ahead and make that up maybe before you even start putting the hydrochloric acid and the aniline into the flask because it does take a while for the sodium acetate to dissolve. So I'd go ahead and probably do that first. Have that set aside. And then these smaller graduated cylinders, you'll measure out the 3.6 mils of the aniline in one and 4.4 mils of acetic anhydride. Uh, about acetic anhydride, it's very sensitive to air. So if you do measure it out earlier, I would take some paper towel and just stopper that in there because what happens acetic anhydride when it comes in contact with moisture in the air it can hydrolyze to acetic acid which reduces the amount of yield that you would get from the reaction today um, and then um, spatula obviously you'll need a spatula when you're starting to weigh out things but you can get that where it's um, located and that's about it for the equipment apparatus that you need uh, today's lab, we're going to make uh, acid aniline, uh, which is the structure that you see here, and we're going to do that by starting with aniline. We're first going to dissolve the aniline in hydrochloric acid solution, and then we will add acetic anhydride followed by uh, sodium acetate, uh, and actually this is a trihydrate, sodium acetate trihydrate, and then we'll get our product, the um, acid aniline. I would say something about acid aniline. Acid aniline is a precursor to sulfonylamine, uh, which is used as a sulfur drug. Uh, this was probably first derived back in the early 1930s, and it still has significant use today in terms of the sulfur drug application. Just to kind of go through the steps, um, when we dissolve the aniline into the hydrochloric acid, we form anilinium chloride. Now the problem with this is, is that this reaction is a nucleophilic acyl substitution, which means that the nitrogen should use its pair of electrons to attack the carbonyl group, doesn't matter which one it attacks because they're equivalent, pi bond breaks, O becomes O minus, reforms and then kicks off this acetate ion. The problem with that is that we dissolve this in acid and we form this anilinium chloride. Notice there will be no unshared pairs of electrons on the nitrogen because all four vacant sites are occupied by bonds. So the purpose of the sodium acetate trihydrate is that when we add that to the anilinium solution, then this acts as a base and pulls off that one of those protons to reform the aniline in acetic acid. This reaction is in equilibrium, so as soon as this is regenerated, it will react almost instantaneously with the acetic anhydride. So the purpose of the sodium acetate trihydrate is to remove that hydrogen from the anilinium chloride so that we can reform the aniline because this is what has to attack the carbonyl group of the acetic anhydride. Um, what I have over here is just lasso chemistry. This is not a true mechanism. I just drew the aniline and separated the hydrogens from each other. Here is our acetic anhydride. And what we're doing is splitting out acetic acid between these two molecules. The hydrogen obviously will go with this oxygen to form the acetic acid. And then the nitrogen would have to go to the carbon who's lost something, in this case this carbonyl carbon, to form our acid aniline. So lasso chemistry, not a true mechanism. You've seen what it means by nucleo nucleophilic acyl substitution before. So today's lab is just to form the acid aniline followed by that procedure. The first thing we're going to do is to dissolve the aniline into 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. This is 0.4 molar. 
So I'm going to add the hydrochloric acid to the Erlenmeyer flask. And I would use a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. And that is equipped with the stir bar. And to that, we're going to add 3.6 milliliters of aniline. And notice this aniline does have a tinted color associated with it. Um, aniline should be a colorless solution. Aniline, any compound that has amino groups attached to them are likely to undergo oxidation just on storage. So this isn't a bad color. If you wanted pure aniline, you would really need to go through the distillation process to steal it, but what you would collect would be completely colorless. But I think this is okay for today's lab. I'm gonna go ahead and add the aniline, the 3.6 mils of aniline. And then we're gonna stir this up. And we're also gonna heat this to about 50 degrees. So I need to get a thermometer because we're gonna heat this to about 50 degrees. Once we're at 50 degrees, we're gonna add the acetic anhydride all in one portion. We'll add the solution of the sodium acetate trihydrate in one solution. And then after that, we'll chill it in an ice bath. So this isn't a very long procedure, uh, but I'll get a thermometer. We'll keep track of the temperature. The aniline should dissolve because the aniline is a base with that amino group on there, and it does react with the hydrochloric acid. So all the aniline should dissolve. When that gets to 50 degrees, we'll add the rest of our reagents. Uh, temperature is right at 50 degrees. So I'm gonna take the thermometer off. I have cut off the heat. And then what I'm gonna do first is add 4.4 milliliters of acetic anhydride in one portion. And I'm gonna stir that vigorously. And then I'm gonna take the six grams of sodium acetate that's been dissolved in 20 mils of water. I'm gonna add that all in one portion. I'm gonna stir vigorously again. And then I'm gonna take this and put in an ice bath. and stir with a stirring rod. I'm gonna remove the uh, magnetic stir bar and stir until crystallization is complete. We want the temperature of the, the contents of the flask to cool down to about five degrees Celsius. And as you can see, there's uh, crystallization has already occurred. Just below 20. Looks like we're close to 10. Looks like we're about eight. Although it's tempting, uh, please do not stir the contents with the thermometer. And it looks like we're at five degrees, so we're gonna stop the stirring process. And notice I'm gonna scrape everything, trying not to lose. You're always gonna lose some material, but trying to scrape that back in. And then I'm just gonna let this sit here until we get ready for the uh, vacuum filtration, butanol funnel and then we'll work from there.